Gaelic football, Wikipedia audio. Gaelic football or Cade, commonly referred to as football or Gaelic, is an Irish team sport. It is played between two teams of 15 players on a rectangular grass pitch. The objective of the sport is to score by kicking or punching the ball into the other team's goals or between two upright posts above the goals and over a crossbar 2.5 meters above the ground. Players advance the football, a spherical leather ball, up the field with a combination of carrying, bouncing, kicking, hand passing, and soloing. In the game, Two types of scores are possible, points and goals. A point is awarded for kicking or hand passing the ball over the crossbar, signaled by the umpire raising a white flag. A goal is awarded for kicking the ball under the crossbar into the net, signaled by the umpire raising a green flag. Positions in Gaelic football are similar to that in other football codes and comprise one goalkeeper, six backs, two midfielders, and six forwards, with a variable number of substitutes. Gaelic football is one of four sports controlled by the Gaelic Athletic Association, the largest sporting organization in Ireland. Along with hurling and kamaji, Gaelic football is one of the few remaining strictly amateur sports in the world, with players coaches, and managers prohibited from receiving any form of payment. Gaelic football is mainly played on the island of Ireland, although units of the association exist in other areas such as Great Britain, North America, and Australia. History The final of the All-Ireland Senior Championship, held annually at Croke Park, Dublin, draws crowds of more than 80,000 people. Outside Ireland, football is mainly played among members of the Irish diaspora. Gaelic Park in New York City is the largest purpose-built Gaelic sports venue outside Ireland. Three major football competitions operate throughout the year, the National Football League and the All-Ireland Senior Championship operate on an inter-county basis while the All-Ireland Club Championship is contested by individual clubs. The All-Ireland Senior Championship is considered the most prestigious event in Gaelic football. Under the auspices of the GAA, Gaelic football is a male-only sport, however, the related sport of ladies Gaelic football is governed by the Ladies Gaelic Football Association. Similarities between Gaelic football and Australian rules football have allowed the development of international rules football, a hybrid sport, and a series of test matches has been held regularly since 1998. Going five steps without releasing, bouncing, or soloing the ball, bouncing the ball twice in a row, changing hands, throwing the ball from your right hand to left or vice versa, throwing the ball, hand passing a goal. To hand pass a ball with an open palm there must be a clear striking action, picking the ball directly off the ground. However, in ladies Gaelic football the ball may be picked up directly, square ball is an often controversial rule, if, at the moment the ball enters the small square, there is already an attacking player inside the small rectangle, then a free out is awarded. As of 2012 square balls are only counted if the player is inside the square when the ball is kicked from a free or set piece. An opposing player is allowed in the square during open play. While Gaelic football as it is known today dates back to the late 19th century, Various kinds of football were played in Ireland before this time. The first legal reference to football in Ireland was in 1308, when John McCrokin, a spectator at a football game at Novum Castrum de Leuan was charged with accidentally stabbing a player named William Bernard. A field near Newcastle, 
South Dublin is still known as the football field. The Statute of Galway of 1527 allowed the playing of football and archery but banned hockey the hurling of a little ball with sticks or staves as well as other sports. By the 17th century, the situation had changed considerably. The games had grown in popularity and were widely played. This was due to the patronage of the gentry. Now instead of opposing the games it was the gentry and the ruling class who were serving as patrons of the games. Games were organized between landlords with each team comprising 20 or more tenants. Wagers were commonplace with purses of up to 100 guineas. The earliest record of a recognized precursor to the modern game date from a match in County Meath in 1670, in which catching and kicking the ball was permitted. However even football was banned by the Severe Sunday Observance Act of 1695, which imposed a fine of one shilling for those caught playing sports. It proved difficult, if not impossible, for the authorities to enforce the act and the earliest recorded inter-county match in Ireland was won between Louth and Meath, at Slane, in 1712, about which the poet James Dahl McEwart wrote a poem of 88 verses beginning B.A. Hagen Tat. A 6A side version was played in Dublin in the early 18th century, and 100 years later there were accounts of games played between county sides. To challenge the authority of a referee, umpire, linesman, or sideline official, to fail to comply with a referee's instruction to use a mouth guard, to refuse to leave the field of play, on the instruction of the referee, for attention, after an injury involving bleeding, to show dissent with the referee's decision to award a free kick to the opposing team, to refuse to leave the field of play when ordered off or rejoin the game after being ordered off, a team or player leaving the field, without the referee's permission or refusing to continue playing. By the early 19th century, various football games, referred to collectively as Cade, were popular in Kerry, especially the Dingle Peninsula. Father W. Ferris described two forms of Cade, the field game in which the object was to put the ball through arch-like goals, formed from the boughs of two trees, and, the epic cross-country game, which lasted the whole of a Sunday and was won by taking the ball across a parish boundary. Wrestling, holding opposing players, and carrying the ball were all allowed. During the 1860s and 1870s, rugby football started to become popular in Ireland. Trinity College, Dublin was an early stronghold of rugby, and the rules of the Football Association were codified in 1863 and distributed widely. By this time, According to Gaelic football historian Jack Mahone, even in the Irish countryside, Cade had begun to give way to a rough and tumble game, which even allowed tripping. Association football started to take hold, especially in Ulster, in the 1880s. Blocking a shot with the foot, pulling an opponent's jersey, pushing an opponent, sliding tackles, Striking an opponent, touching the goalkeeper when he slash she is inside the small rectangle, tripping, using both hands to tackle, wrestling the ball from an opponent's hands. Rules Limerick was the stronghold of the native game around this time, and the Commercials Club, founded by employees of Canuck's Drapery Store, was one of the first to impose a set of rules which was adapted by other clubs in the city. Of all the Irish pastimes the GAA set out to preserve and promote, it is fair to say that Gaelic football was in the worst shape at the time of the association's foundation. 
Irish forms of football were not formally arranged into an organised playing code by the Gaelic Athletic Association until 1887. The GAA sought to promote traditional Irish sports, such as hurling and to reject foreign imports. The first Gaelic football rules, showing the influence of hurling and a desire to differentiate from association football for example in their lack of an offside rule were drawn up by Maurice Davin and published in the United Ireland magazine on February 7, 1887. The rules of the aforementioned commercials club became the basis for these official rules who, unsurprisingly, won the inaugural All-Ireland Senior Football Final. The very first game of Gaelic football under GAA rules was played near Callan, C.O. Kilkenny in February 1885. On Bloody Sunday in 1920, during the Anglo-Irish War, a football match at Croke Park was attacked by British forces. Fourteen people were killed and 65 were injured. Among the dead was Tipperary footballer Michael Hogan, for whom the Hogan stand at Croke Park was named. By 1958, Wembley Stadium hosted annual exhibition games of Gaelic football in England, before tens of thousands of spectators. Ladies Gaelic football has become increasingly popular with women since the 1970s. The relationship between Gaelic football and Australian rules football and the question of whether they have shared origins is a matter of historical controversy. Games are held between an Irish representative team and an Australian team, under compromise rules known as international rules football. A Gaelic pitch is similar in some respects to a rugby pitch but larger. The grass pitch is rectangular stretching 130-145 meters long and 80-90 m wide. There are H-shaped goalposts at each end, formed by two posts, which are usually 6-7 meters high, set 6.5 m apart, and connected 2.5 m above the ground by a crossbar. A net extending behind the goal is attached to the crossbar and lower goal posts. The same pitch is used for hurling, the GAA, which organises both sports, decided this to facilitate dual usage. Lines are marked at distances of 13 metres, 20 metres and 45 metres from each end line. Shorter pitches and smaller goals are used by youth teams. Playing Field Duration the majority of adult football and all minor and under-21 matches last for 60 minutes, divided into two halves of 30 minutes, with the exception of senior inter-county games, which last for 70 minutes. Draws are decided by replays or by playing 20 minutes of extra time. Juniors have a half of 20 minutes or 25 minutes in some cases. Half-time lasts for about 5 or 10 minutes. The referee, two linesmen, sideline official slash standby linesmen, four umpires. Teams. Positions. Ball. Mark. Types of fouls. Teams consist of 15 players plus up to 15 substitutes of which five may be used. As for younger teams or teams that do not have enough players for 15 aside, it is not uncommon to play 13 aside, with a circumference of 6870 cm, weighing between 48500 g when dry. It may be kicked or hand passed. A hand pass is not a punch but rather a strike of the ball with the side of the closed fist using the knuckle of the thumb. In 2017, the GAA introduced the mark across the board in Gaelic football. Similar to the mark in Australian rules football, a player who catches the ball from a kickout is awarded a free kick. 
The rule in full states, when a player catches the ball cleanly from a kick out without it touching the ground, on or past the 45m line nearest the kick out point, he shall be awarded a mark by the referee. The player awarded a mark shall have the options of taking a free kick or playing on immediately. Technical Fouls There are three main types of fouls in Gaelic football, which can result in the ball being given to the other team, a player being cautioned, a player being removed from the field, or even the game being terminated. The following are considered technical fouls. Aggressive fouls are physical or verbal fouls committed by a player against an opponent or the referee. The player can be cautioned, ordered off the pitch without a substitute, or ordered off the pitch with a substitution. A descent foul is a foul where a player fails to comply with the official's judgment and slash or instructions. The player can be cautioned ordered off the pitch without a substitute, the free kick placement moved 13m further downfield, or in certain circumstances, the game can be terminated. The following are considered descent fouls. If the ball goes over the crossbar, a point is scored and a white flag is raised by an umpire. A point is scored by either kicking the ball over the crossbar, or fisting it over in which case the hand must be closed while striking the ball. If the ball goes below the crossbar, a goal, worth three points, is scored, and a green flag is raised by an umpire. A goal is scored by kicking the ball into the net, not by fist passing the ball into it. However, a player can strike the ball into the net with a closed fist if the ball was played to him by another player or came in contact with the post-slash-crossbar-slash-ground prior to connection. The goal is guarded by a goalkeeper. Scores are recorded in the format goal total point total. To determine the scoreline goals must be converted to points and added to the other points. For example, in a match with a final score of Team A 0 21 Team B 4 8, Team A is the winner with 21 points, as Team B scored only 20 points. The level of tackling allowed is less robust than in rugby. Shoulder to shoulder contact and slapping the ball out of an opponent's hand are permitted, but the following are all fouls. Aggressive fouls a football match is overseen by up to eight officials. The referee is responsible for starting and stopping play, recording the score, awarding freeze and booking and sending off players. Descent Linesmen are responsible for indicating the direction of line balls to the referee. The fourth official is responsible for overseeing substitutions, and also indicating the amount of stoppage time and the players substituted using an electronic board. Scoring Tackling Restarting play The umpires are responsible for judging the scoring. They indicate to the referee whether a shot was, wide, a 45m kick, a point, square ball or a goal. A disallowed score is indicated by crossing the green and white flags. Other officials are not obliged to indicate any misdemeanors to the referee, they are only permitted to inform the referee of violent conduct they have witnessed that has occurred without the referee's knowledge. A linesman slash umpire is not permitted to inform the referee of technical fouls such as a double bounce or an illegal pickup of the ball. Such decisions can only be made at the discretion of the referee. The team of the century was nominated in 1984 by Sunday Independent Readers and selected by a panel of experts including journalists and former players. It was not chosen as part of the Gaelic Athletic Association's centenary year celebrations.
The goal was to single out the best ever 15 players who had played the game in their respective positions. Naturally many of the selections were hotly debated by fans around the country. The team of the millennium was a team chosen in 1999 by a panel of GAA past presidents and journalists. The goal was to single out the best ever 15 players who had played the game in their respective positions, since the foundation of the GAA in 1884 up to the millennium year, 2000. Naturally many of the selections were hotly debated by fans around the country. Gaelic sports at all levels are amateur, in the sense that the athletes even those playing at elite level do not receive payment for their performance. The main competitions at all levels of Gaelic football are the league and the championship. Of these it is the championship that tends to attain the most prestige. The basic unit of each game is organized at the club level, which is usually arranged on a parochial basis. Local clubs compete against other clubs in their county with the intention of winning the county club championship at senior, junior or intermediate levels or under 21, minor or underage levels. A club may field more than one team. For example a club may field a team at senior level and a seconds team at junior or intermediate level. This format is laid out in the table below. Clubs may come together in districts for the county championship or compete on their own. Though the island of Ireland was partitioned between two states by the British Parliament in 1920, the organization of Gaelic games continues on an all-Ireland basis. At the national level, Ireland's Gaelic games are organized in 32 GAA counties, most of which are identical in name and extent to the 32 administrative counties on which local government throughout the island was based until the late 20th century. The term county is also used for some overseas GAA places, such as London and New York. Clubs are also located throughout the world, in other parts of the United States, in Britain, in Canada, in Asia, in Australasia, and in continental Europe. The level at which county teams compete against each other is referred to as inter-county. A county panel a team of 15 players, plus a similar number of substitutes is formed from the best players playing at club level in each county. The most prestigious inter-county competition in Gaelic football is the All-Ireland Championship. The highest level national championship is called the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship. Nearly all counties contest this tournament on an annual basis with crowds of people thronging venues the length and breadth of Ireland the most famous of these stadiums being Croke Park to support their local county team, a team comprising players selected from the clubs in that county. These modified knockout games start as provincial championships contested by counties against other counties in their respective province, the four Irish provinces of Ulster, Munster, Leinster and Connacht. The four victors in these then progress automatically to the All-Ireland series. In the past, the team winning each provincial championship would play one of the others, at a stage known as the All-Ireland semi-finals, with the winning team from each game playing each other in the famed All-Ireland final to determine the outright winner. A recent reorganization created a backdoor method of qualifying with teams knocked out during the provincial rounds of the All-Ireland Championship now acquiring a second chance at glory. Now the four victorious teams at provincial level enter the recently created All-Ireland quarter-finals instead, where they compete against the four remaining teams from the All-Ireland qualifiers to progress to the All-Ireland semi-finals and then the All-Ireland final. This reorganization means that one team may defeat another team in an early stage of the championship, yet be defeated and knocked out of the tournament by the same team at a later stage. 
It also means a team may be defeated in an early stage of the championship, yet be crowned All-Ireland champions as Tyrone were in 2005 and 2008. The secondary competition at inter-county level is the National League. The National Football League is held every spring and groups counties in four divisions according to their relative strength. As at local levels of Gaelic football, the league at national level is less prestigious than the championship however, in recent years attendances have grown, as has interest from the public and from players. This is due in part to the 2002 adoption of a February-April timetable in place of the former November start, as well as the provision of Division II final stages. Live matches are aired on the international channel Seton Task Sports and the Irish-language channel TG4, with highlights shown on Route 2. There are also All-Ireland Championships for county teams at junior, under-21 and minor levels, and provincial and national club championships contested by the teams that win their respective county championships. Officials Team of the Century Team of the Millennium Competition Structure Notes